and congratulations on your transplant. You are now home, or at least on your way, and you're probably wondering, what's next? My friends and I at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC would like to talk to you about a few things that will help make your recovery a smooth one. In this episode, you will learn about medications and tests, signs and symptoms of complications, such as rejection and infection, and healthy behaviors for recovery. So, sit back, relax, and let's talk about healthy living after your transplant. After your transplant, you will need to take a lot of medications and will need close monitoring. At first, the number of medications and the number of times that you need to take them every day may seem overwhelming. As time goes by, it will get easier. Just hang in there. When you are getting ready to go home, it is very important that you know about all of your medications. Why each medication is prescribed, what is the dose, when should it be given, what are the side effects, and any special instructions. To stay healthy, you will also need to monitor your weight, temperature, and blood pressure. Know and understand the signs and symptoms of rejection and infection. Have labs drawn routinely and attend all follow-up appointments. The most important medication that you will need to take after your transplant is your immunosuppression, also known as your anti-rejection medicine. Our immune system protects our body by attacking foreign substances like viruses and bacteria. However, it can also cause some problems for transplant patients by attacking your newly transplanted organ. You will need to take your anti-rejection medication every day as prescribed to keep this from happening. Biopsies are a very important screening tool to look for rejection before it causes damage to the transplanted heart. During a cardiac catheterization, small pieces of the right ventricle are taken and sent to the lab to be examined under a microscope. Treatment for rejection is dependent on severity. If rejection is found, your transplant doctor will decide the best way to treat it and will explain the treatment to you. Successful treatment will make the rejection go away. You will need to take immunosuppressants for the rest of your life to protect your transplanted organ. Medications need to be taken daily always as prescribed. More stable drug levels equals less frequent blood work and less risk of rejection. Taking your medications correctly and following the medication schedule will help keep you healthy. Rejection of your transplanted organ can occur at any time as a result of missed doses of anti-rejection medications. You may also need to take other medications to treat or prevent infections, control your blood pressure, replace electrolytes, and to prevent or treat stomach irritation. It is important that you contact your post-transplant coordinator before taking any over-the-counter medication or starting any new medications so that drug interactions and complications can be prevented. Also, be sure to follow your doctor's instructions for lab work. Accurate lab results will help your doctor monitor your health and adjust your medications. When you are getting ready to leave the hospital, your nurse will talk with you about signs and symptoms you must watch out for. When you go home, pay close attention to how you feel, your temperature, and anything else your nurse asks you to be aware of. If you notice anything is out of the ordinary, be sure to contact your coordinator right away. While you are on immunosuppression medication, there is a higher risk that you could get an infection. A few months after your transplant, you might come down with illnesses like a cold or the flu. The best way to keep from getting sick is to wash your hands well for at least 15 seconds with soap and water. Don't share drinks and eating utensils. Avoid large crowds, especially during cold and flu season, and to stay away from people who are sick. Prevent influenza. The best protection is to vaccinate. You should make sure to get your flu vaccine every year. After your heart transplant, you will not be able to receive live virus vaccines like these. But your family and caregivers should get these vaccines as a way to protect you from exposure to these infections. You will be scheduled for frequent outpatient visits, cardiac catheterization, 
with biopsy and lab testing. These visits are important to keep you healthy and screen for rejection. Visits and biopsies will be much more frequent early after your transplant and will decrease as time goes by. We want to help you live a normal, happy, active lifestyle. To do this, it is very important that you monitor your weight, blood pressure, and temperature as instructed, and maintain a healthy lifestyle that includes a balanced diet, regular exercise, and routine checkups. Good nutrition will help you feel better. You might meet with a dietitian to help you plan a well-balanced diet. Drinking enough fluid is also very important to preventing injury to your kidneys. Surgery and hospitalization can affect children and their families in many ways. Please know that the transplant team at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC will be here to support you and your child through the challenges ahead. Your pediatric transplant coordinators are available 24 hours a day. They can answer any questions you have at any time, before and after your transplant surgery. Also, you will be able to learn more and find answers to commonly asked questions by visiting the website below or referencing your post-transplant handbook. On behalf of all of us here at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC, we thank you for entrusting us with your care and wish you the best on your transplant journey.